this video, I will discuss the role of citizen co-creation in urban food and agriculture. You will learn about different forms of urban food production and how they relate to the topic of co-creation. Moreover, you will see that urban greenhouses are particularly interesting when talking about urban food and co-creation. Urban food is food that is produced in and around urban areas for nearby urban markets and with the help of urban resources. Examples of urban resources are vacant land, voluntary labor and waste energy. Around the world we find a wide variety of types of urban agriculture. As you will see, these different types are each adapted to local circumstances and allow for different forms of co-creation by citizens. Here you see a matrix of urban agriculture types that we developed in various projects in the Netherlands where we looked at the planning of urban food and agriculture in an urban context. The tables distinguish urban food initiatives along two dimensions, a food growing and an agronomic dimension on the horizontal axis and a spatial dimension on the vertical axis. First, there is the agronomic or food growing dimension. In terms of agronomy, systems of urban food production can be organized in an open, in a closed or a mixed way. An open system is a system that is adapted to natural influences. For example, a permaculture garden or snake-shaped wall where grapes can grow in the heat that is captured by the wall. We speak of a closed system when food is produced in a completely controlled environment. Here, natural influences are blocked or managed at least. An example are the so-called growing cabinets. These cabinets use green technologies for lighting and for controlling the in-house climate, the temperature, the supply of water and nutrients. As you can see, closed forms of urban food production are often more high-tech than open modes of food production. Secondly, there is the spatial dimension. Some urban food initiatives are to be found in or on top of urban buildings. Others are situated in peri-urban open land. The spatial dimension of urban food production is important when discussing the co-creation and the engagements of citizens with food. Even though urban space is sc scarce and expensive, the reason for bringing food back into the city is to reconnect the food system to the live worlds of urban populations. With regard to co-creating urban food systems, we distinguish three basic forms as shown here. On the left side of the scheme, you see that citizens can be involved as concerned consumers, for example, when they pay a fair price to farmers. On the right-hand side of the scheme, you see that they can also be more actively engaged in food production, for example, when growing food for themselves on a private allotment or together with fellow citizens in a community garden. The third form of co-creation to be found in the middle refers to citizens for, who, for example, commit themselves to buying a share of the harvest. They also can prepay the farmer at the start of the season to make him or her independent from the bank or credit supplier. This is often combined with doing all kinds of voluntary work at the farm, sowing, weeding, pruning, feeding or harvesting. In this way, citizens as co-owners commit not just their money, but also their labor to the farm. As you see, citizens can be involved in urban food production in different ways and traditionally the more active engagement means to cover your hands with real mud. The open systems are from community supported agriculture to community gardens particularly strong at this point. This in contrast with the recent emerging forms of closed high-tech circular urban greenhouses they offer high-tech solutions which require high levels of training and professionalism. It is so much easier to learn citizens how to hand weed in an open field than how to control a drone that is programmed to control pests and diseases in a glass house. To fulfill the function of reconnecting the urban population to food production in a meaningful way, the, green, the urban greenhouse should be designed in such a way that high-tech food production is combined with attractive forms of co-creation for citizens. Urban greenhouses should be places where people meet 
co-produce, perhaps also cook and eat, and learn about healthy, sustainable food. What do you think? Is it possible to design high-tech urban food systems in such a way that they are accessible for lay people and open to attractive and engaging forms of co-creation by citizens? Which roles do you think to be most significant, significant for citizens when engaging food production in scarce urban space? <laughs>